Christmas is just around the corner and what better way to celebrate than to make an ice shader. In this video we'll use shader graph to fake refraction through the ice and use the fantastic ice texture I grabbed from cc0textures.com to give the ice mesh a texture. Make sure you are using universal render pipeline and that you have shader graph installed through the package manager. I'm starting with the URP default scene but I've placed a couple of ice meshes over the landscape. This is something I whipped up really quickly in Blender and it's included in the GitHub repository linked in the description. We're going to be making use of a node called scene color, so first we need to make sure the render pipeline allows us to access the scene color texture. The easiest way to access the render pipeline asset is to go to project settings, graphics, click the render pipeline asset and then go to the inspector. Check the boxes labeled opaque texture and depth texture and we're good to go. To create the shader, right click in the project view and select Create Shader PBR Graph, since you want to use Unity's lighting system. Name it Ice. The first thing we will do is to read the ice texture in order to convert it to normal data. Those normals determine how the ice refracts light. For that, add a texture 2D property called Ice Normals, then set the mode to Bump. We will use a Vector2 property called Ice Tiling to control how many times the texture is tiled across the mesh. So set the default to 1, 1. Now we can drag ice texture onto the graph. From this, we will drag out a normal from texture node, which converts this texture to a normal map based on its grayscale color. We'll make use of the ice tiling property by using a tiling and offset node in the UV slot, and we will connect ice tiling to, you guessed it, the tiling pin. This group of nodes outputs a normal vector based on the ice normals texture. Next, we will use these normals to refract light through the ice. This won't be physically accurate refraction, but it'll serve as a good approximation. Add a vector1 property called refract strength and make it a slider between minus one and one. Or you can make it between zero and one, it doesn't actually matter too much. The refraction will be based on whatever's already been rendered behind the ice, which we can retrieve using the scene color node. It takes in a coordinate in screen space, so use a screen position node. To that, we will add the normals, but first we need to multiply them by refract strength. Now, the output of this group of nodes should be the scene texture, modulated and distorted slightly by the ice texture. If we connect this to the albedo pin on PBR Master and set a default ice normals texture, we won't get the result we want, even if we increase the refract strength above zero. That's because our material is currently using opaque rendering, meaning that the scene texture won't have anything drawn in it and therefore the scene color node will just return black. We need to use the cog dropdown menu and change the rendering mode to transparent to ensure that this material is drawn after all opaque objects have been drawn into the scene texture. Now we can add a blue tint to the ice by adding a color property named ice color, setting it to HDR mode to give it a higher intensity and look like lots of light is reflecting off of it. Insert a multiply node between the scene color and the master albedo to multiply everything we have so far by ice color. The preview now has a blue tint. Ice is very reflective if you view it from a shallow angle, so we're going to add Fresnel to the shader. Add a new vector one property called Fresnel Strength, make it a slider between 0.001 and 1, then give it a default of about 0.2. We don't want the minimum value to be zero because that will break what we're about to write. Unity provides a Fresnel effect node which takes in a power parameter and we're going to use the reciprocal of the Fresnel strength for this pin. Reciprocal just means one divided by the input, and that's why zero would break this shader. Once we've calculated it, we can add it to the total color before outputting to the master albedo. The final step is to connect the normal texture we calculated near the start to the normal pin on PBR master to override the lighting calculations on the surface of the ice. We can just drag it directly, but the wires get a little bit crossed, so one trick I like to use is to add a preview node to redirect the wires. That helps keep the graph a lot neater, and now we can see that the main preview looks very icy, although the only thing rendered behind it is grey, so we don't see the full effect yet. Back in the editor, I've selected the ice material, and I'm going to change its shader by using the shader dropdown, looking for the shader graph section, and selecting ice. Immediately you can see a huge difference, but there's no refraction because the refract strength is zero. If we increase or decrease this, we can see the refraction at work. That's it for this shader. It would be rather complicated to model physically accurate refractions, but you can make a convincing ice shader without needing to do that. 
Thank you, as always, to all of my patrons who make every video possible. Your names are on screen right now. And thank you to the almost 3,000 people who are subscribed. If that's not you, consider subscribing and checking out my other videos. It's been a very long year, but I'm hoping that 2021 looks a bit happier for you all. If you know someone who's alone at this time of year, then maybe set aside some time to give them a quick call and catch up with them. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Enjoy your holidays, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.